Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Tim and this is Run Tall. Now I post running shoe reviews, comparisons, and shoe battles every single week. So if you're a running nerd like I am, consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. On today's video, I'm comparing two Max Cushion Daily Trainers. It is the New Balance Fresh Foam X More V4 going up against the newly released, so this is for 2023, the Asex Gel Nimbus 25. Now both of these shoes, as I said, are Max Cushion Daily Trainers, so they kind of live in that wheelhouse of comfort. Neither one of these shoes are going to be your speed day option. So if you're thinking long, easy run or recovery run, then these are two good options for you to take a look at. All right, so let's just start with the cost. I did purchase both of these with my own money. The A6 Gel Nimbus 25, now that comes in at 160 US dollars. And since they are new for 2023, it's unlikely that you're gonna be able to find any kind of discount. Maybe if there's a sale going on, uh, you know, you might be able to save a little bit of money that way. Now with the New Balance Fresh From X More V4, this is a shoe from 2022. So it's more likely that you'll be able to find this shoe on sale at a discount, which is what I did. Normally it retails for 150 US dollars. So retail price, not a big difference between these two shoes, but I was able to pick these up for $113 from Joe's New Balance discount website. And I was, I'm always appreciative when I can save a little bit of money. I did order both shoes true to size for me, which is a US men's size nine, and they essentially weigh the same. When I put them on my scales for the New Balance Fresh Foam X More V4, they came in at 10.4 ounces, while the A6 Gel Nimbus 25 came in at 10.5 ounces. All right, so let's get into it. Let's talk about these two shoes to see which one might be the right max cushion shoe for you. Beginning with the uppers, I'll start with the More V4 since I have those in my hand. Now, this has a bit of a cloth texture to them. It's thick. I will tell you that both of these shoes whether it's the Nimbus 25 or the More V4 are gonna run hot on foot. These are a little bit warmer, but they're both pretty warm. So if you live in a hot climate, you might wanna look for maybe a different Max Cushion shoe to run in because these both do run warm on foot. Here in Michigan, our weather fluctuates in the mornings. It can be right this time of year around 50 degrees, maybe even in the high 40s. But by the afternoon, it could be in the 80s or 90s. So an early morning run, these are fine, as are these. But if you're a consistently warm climate, again, hot on foot. Uh, lots of room up here in the toe box. And I would say that that's true for both shoes. Very comfortable. I would say that these have a little bit more volume up here because when I go to lace them down, I get a little bit of puckering right there at the start of the lace enclosure system. And I don't get that in the gel Nimbus 25. So I think in the overall fit of these shoes, when we're talking about form fitting, the A6 gel Nimbus 25 is gonna come out ahead there. So I do like the upper and I like how it fits. I get snugged across the midfoot section in both shoes. That's not an issue at all. They both fit really comfortably right out of the box. No break-in period, no hot spots, no blisters, nothing in either one of these shoes. So when it comes to comfort, you know, they got it going on in both cases. So that really should not be a consideration when you're trying to decide which of these shoes that you might want to purchase for yourself. Uh, so let's kind of continue up here. So we've got the lace enclosure system. They are different on these two shoes. So with the New Balance Fresh Foam More, you can see that it's a very traditional lace enclosure system. You know, basic eyelet chain. The tongue is not gusseted, but it's fairly thick, a little thinner than last year's model, but I haven't had any comfort issues so far in these shoes. Uh, the tongue is laid flat across my midfoot. I haven't had it uh, sliding around at all, you know, even though it is not gusseted. I think it helps that it has that little pass through to help hold it in place too. Uh, never felt the laces cutting across the top of my midfoot at all. So very comfortable tongue, but very traditional. It's what uh, we've seen in all of the running shoes up until recently, it seems. Now, bit of a different story here with Asics Gel Nimbus 25. You can see that they don't have a traditional eyelet chain. They've got this kind of loop system here. And then the tongue is quite different. Now, I first saw this in the Gel Nimbus 24, and I loved it at first because it's got all this stretch to it. It's a stretchy tongue. It's sewed right in, so it's got a full gusset, basically. So it is not going anywhere, ever. 
but that stretchiness that I liked in the beginning kind of wore off as I put more miles in the 24. And so it's just, it's okay. It does a good job. It's very comfortable. But when you go to put them on, sometimes you can get a lot of, <laughs> look at that stretch. And it got maybe a little bit annoying over time, but I do like the comfort of the tongue. It's, it's fine. It's just, it's stretchy. And if you like that kind of thing, if you like a stretchy tongue, go for the gel number 25 because they got it going on that way. Both have lots of padding around the heel collar and the tab of the shoe. The one thing I do want to note on the More V4 is right up here. This seems to ride on the collar of the shoe a little bit higher and even higher than most of my other running shoes that I have because I did notice this kind of pressing up and a little bit of pressure on my ankle bone. Not so much that it caused me any kind of hot spots, like I said earlier. So it's comfortable, but it's, it's noticeable. And I think it's worth mentioning to you because if that is a sensitive area for you or if that's an area where you have had trouble in the past, just know that these do ride up just a little bit more than what you find in the Asex Gel Nimbus 25. Now these look, if you put them up uh, to each other, they look like they ride about the same height, but it's a little bit deceiving because on the uh, 25, this, is, this does not set up against your foot at all. It's got a little bit of a uh, flap, I guess, here on the end. So it's not really touching your foot at all. So it looks like it rides up higher than that collar really does. So let's pat it back in the heel counter. As I mentioned, both have really nice solid heel pockets for your heel to sit in. I haven't had any kind of heel slippage, either side or side or up to down, up or down. Very, very comfortable that way. The heel counters are slightly different. Now with the New Balance Fresh Foam More V4, you can see it's got a slight Achilles heel curve here and it rides up a little bit taller which is nice because you can grab a hold of that to help you get your shoes on should you need to or want to do that so I found that to be really comfortable and I'm used to that heel flare now it took me a while when they first came out with that style uh, but here it's a more traditional heel counter so you can see it just kind of rides right up here there's no heel flare at all but they do have this pull tab to help you get your shoes on and that helps compensate for the stretchiness of the tongue uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to get the shoes on. Uh, both very comfortable uppers. And, you know, in terms of differences, again, these are just a little bit wider to me up here in the forefoot of the shoe, or at least it has just a bit more volume because, again, I do have to cinch them down, but super comfortable. All right, so let's talk about the midsoles because that's the engine of the shoe for both of these, and there's a big difference here. With the Gel Nemesis 25, they have a ton of their Flight Foam Blast Plus Eco Midsole, and it's a big mouthful for sure, but it has a big stack height. They have 41 and a half millimeters of that foam in the heel, and they have 33 and a half millimeters up in the forefoot, so they have an eight millimeter offset. Also, within the, within the foam itself, there's a little bit of tech here. Uh, the gel part of the name, is the gel that's here in the uh, back of the shoe. So right where your heel sets. That's nice, I think, if you're a heel striker because I found with the Gel Nimbus 24, when they had the gel up in the forefoot and in the heel area, I'm a mid to forefoot foot striker and that gel did a nice job dispensing or dispersing the impact of my foot strike. So it really kind of absorbed that and was a shoe that was really comfortable for me to run. And it wasn't for everybody. I know that, um, but for me, it worked really well. So these are quite a difference, quite a big difference than the previous version of the shoe, and they only kept the gel in the heel. So I think if you're a heel striker, you're going to get the benefit of that gel helping to absorb the impact of your foot strike, and I think that you know it's going to do a good job for you there. Uh, along those lines, the uh, the foam here underfoot, I think, is just even though there's a lot of it and more than what we see in the more v4 and i'll talk about that here in a second their stack heights but even though there's more of it it still seems a little bit more firm to me there's not there's not any kind of squish in these at least not as much as what i found in the more v4 uh, and especially in the heel area so this is a little bit more dense but that could be a really good thing if you're a heel striker and especially if you're a, a bigger runner you're going to have more back there to keep you from slamming into the ground. Plus, you're going to have that little extra gel, too. Now, I'm a lighter runner, so I think that's worth noting. I weigh about, you know, 135 pounds, soaking wet. And I'm about five foot five, even though it says on my license, my driver's license, I'm five foot seven. But in reality, I think when I go to the doctors for my annual physical, he comes in at around five foot five. 
Um, so very comfortable to, to run in. There is tons of cushion. It lives up to the max cushion genre of shoes, but for me, it's not quite as soft and maybe not quite as nimble because, you know, when I'm trying to flex this shoe up here, you know, I'm putting some, I'm putting some force in there to get that to flex. So let's see how that compares to the more V4. Here they've got 34 millimeters of their fresh foam X midsole foam in the heel and 30 up in the forefoot. So they only have a four, a four millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. So, you know, half of what we see in the gel number is 25. I think that's worth noting, uh, but it's it's really comfortable. I do get more of a squish factor when I, when I run in these, uh, especially uh, back towards the heel area. Now I don't heel strike a lot, but I did heel strike in both of these shoes just to kind of test it out a little bit. Um, and these definitely feel like there's a little bit more of a squish factor there and they roll through just a little bit easier for me. Now they have a more of a rocker geometry to the shoe. So I feel like I'm rolling through just a little bit more smoothly. Um, and these flex quite a bit easier. I mean, I'm not putting in nearly the amount of effort that I was trying to put into that shoe. So for me, it's just a little bit more natural through my gait, but the biggest difference for me it's just how wide and stable these are compared to the gel numbers 25s just look at these things i mean they are wide from uh, from stem to stern and for someone like myself who over pronates uh, you know this feels super comfortable because it didn't seem to matter how i was striking the ground i was always getting a comfortable feel and that makes a world of difference and there seem to be these are not stability shoes but they're but they're a highly stable shoe, even when we're talking about inward roll, which that's that's what happens to me because I have flat feet and I tend to over pronate. I don't tend to over pronate. I severely over pronate. Uh, and these do a really good job keeping me in a healthy level of pronation. Now, again, they're not a stability shoe. I'm not saying that at all. But as far as running shoes go for a neutral shoe, they're highly stable and they feel terrific to run. I absolutely love these shoes. So. When it comes to between these two shoes, if I am just picking one up to go out for a nice, slow, easy run, I'm, I'm going to be reaching for the more V4 because it fits my mechanics of my running a little bit better than what the gel numbers 25 does. Now, these are both comfortable running shoes, highly, uh, you know, highly cushioned shoes. And the one thing that both of these shoes have going for them, they're not versatile when it comes to training. Not at all. You're going to be running slow in both of these shoes, but you're going to have a comfortable run. Where I think that they do have some versatility is you can use both of these shoes as a lifestyle shoe. You can wear these to you know, run down and get some groceries or <laughs> where I can see a great benefit. If your job requires you that you're on your feet a lot all day, maybe a nurse or something along those lines, these are going to do a great job for you uh, in keeping your feet really comfortable so your legs feel much fresher at the end of the day. And it doesn't matter which shoe that you pick up, you're going to be super comfortable in these. Or maybe if you're looking at taking maybe one shoe on vacation because you want to keep your bags a little bit lighter, you could take either one of these shoes, walk around you know, your favorite theme park all day long and still have pretty fresh legs at the end of the day to take these out for a run. You would only have to take one shoe for that. So that's where I think that they do have some versatility for these max cushion shoes. But now when we flip these shoes over and we take a look at the outsole, I think both companies did a really good job in protecting their softer midsole foam here. There's really not much difference in terms of the amount of coverage. And I think they both did a really good job keeping me tight to the road. So I never felt like I was unsafe in either shoe. I think that outsole rubber on both of them do a good job sticking to the road. I absolutely love the wider land landing platform on these. It feels absolutely wonderful for me to run in them. These feel great, just they're just not as great a feeling for me or as comfortable to run in as the more V4s are. All right, so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Here we go, run tall.